Welcome back to Faithteen TV. Today we are talking about the wired world of technology and what one group, Faith Tech, is doing to use technology for the good. My guest is Faith Tech founder and CEO, James Kelly. people they get together give up a weekend they buy the website how to kill yourself and on the website they put the banner title was you're not alone well just like two months later one of the web developers from the team she goes last night i was having coffee with a friend of mine and i was telling my friend about this website i was building and the friend just starts breaking down crying and she's like what what's going on i went online the friend said and I was asking Google how to kill myself. I go online and I saw that website and it saved my life. This was a turning point for me in realizing that we could leverage technology to do good According to a 2023 report called Global Social Media Statistics by data reportal Global Digital Insights, there are as many as 4.76 million social media users in the world, an estimated 60% of the entire human population. According to the social media stats organization Made in Canada, there are 33.1 million social media users in our nation and 36 million Canadians on the internet. Internet. That is over 92% of our population. Facebook is the most popular platform in Canada with over 72% of our nation using it regularly. And TikTok is the fastest growing platform in our nation. The average Canadian spends more than two hours a day on social media. And 24 to 35 year olds are the most active group. There is no doubt that the internet and social media have dramatically changed our world and how we do life. GPS devices have been replaced with smartphones, voice calls with video calls, and information overload is the norm. So how is this impacting us, our work, our relationships, our mental health? And how can we ensure that the technology in our lives is bringing a positive impact rather than a negative one? Well, these are some of the questions that we are going to be diving into today with our guest, James Kelly, founder and CEO of Faith. Tech. Faith Tech is a rapidly growing international network based out of Canada of those in the tech industry who are committed to ensuring that technology is being used as a blessing to users around the world. They have a network in 37 cities across the globe and 14 nations and are growing by the year. Thanks for joining us for this eye-opening conversation about something that is impacting us all and those we love. Let's get to it. Well, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Thank you so much for joining me today, James, the founder and CEO of an incredible organization called Faith Tech. For our viewers, James, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you started this organization. Yeah, thanks, Faithine. So excited to talk about this. Such an important conversation. At the core, Faith Tech is a community of primarily people working in the tech industry, in the tech companies that gather together in cities in person. And we think deeply on the intersection between um, our work in tech and our faith. And even to the point of, we've done a ton of events over the years on digital addiction or a theology of technology. What does God think of technology? Is technology in the Bible? Which yes, it is. And, um, and, and so we think deeply and then we build. And so we have a whole, like we have hundreds of people right now that work at Google and Apple, Facebook, tech startups that donate their time to create innovative technology. This community has grown quite a lot. I'm in Waterloo, Canada, and uh, it started seven years ago here in Waterloo. That's when I went full time with kind of helping this community get started. And then uh, now we're in 37 cities, I think 14 countries um, and uh, just people all over the world are saying, I work in tech or I'm influenced by technology, or I think technology is really important 
in terms of influencing the world, we need to be thinking about this intersection way more deeply and we need to do something about it. We're very action oriented community. And so Faith Tech is a, a community of people coming together around this passion area. And yeah, and all, all the major cities in the world, most of them now have a community of believers working in tech that gather regularly in their city, uh, building this type of technology. And so we've got about 100 products being built right now, all by volunteers. Um, uh, it's, it's amazing. Well, I find it so fascinating because we live in such a cynical time, right, where people are pointing out the problems all across society, across every sector. And yet you mm -hmm. guys have come together to say, okay, we have this skill, we have the ability mm -hmm. to create technology, to create apps, to code, all the stuff. Mm -hmm. And yes. you're saying, okay, we want to use this for good, which I think is amazing. Yeah. I think that's what we need. Now, a few years ago, James, you and I, I think we were on a call together and you shared this incredible story about a website that you had launched to help mm -hmm. rescue people from suicide. Share that story with yes. our viewers oh man this is a wild thing this was a turning point for me in realizing that we could leverage technology this was around seven years ago i had discovered here in canada this was seven years ago eight thousand people every month would go on google and search these words how to kill yourself i'm like really like 8,000 people every month. And so right away, I thought, well, what comes up? What, what, what's the result? So if you have 8,000 people, what are they clicking on? And I searched it. And the top result, I kid you not, I, top result was an article that said seven easy, painless ways to kill yourself. A few down from there was like a YouTube video that showed you ways to kill yourself. And I I remember the moment so vividly. I was in a coffee shop. I'm like, what am I looking at right now? Is this for real? Now, amazingly, two months after that or a month after that, we were hosting our first ever hackathon, which is like a retreat for geeks to build technology. It's amazing. We use our tech skills and in a very short period of time, we build technology. And in this case, obviously for really good reasons. And so I just presented... I was just like, I just found this out. I have no idea what to do about it, but like, we have to do something. You know, it's like one of those moments in your life, you hear something and you're like, why have I not done anything about this yet? And so by God's grace, four people, you had two web developers, a communications manager from a charity and a psychotherapist who was there just setting up chairs in the back, heard this. They get together, give up a weekend they buy the website howtokillyourself.org. And on the website, they put the banner title was You're Not Alone. Un unbelievable. And now they put the website out and I'm just thinking, oh, maybe a few people could get help from that. Well, just like two months later, one of the web developers from the team, she calls me and she's like, I need to chat with you. So I'm like, what, what's going on? She goes, last night, I was having coffee with a friend of mine and I was telling my friend about this website I was building and she's describing the fonts, the colors and her friend interrupts and she's like, wait, what's the domain of that website you built? And she goes, how to kill yourself.org. And the friend just starts breaking down crying. And she's like, what, what's going on? She said the, the night before I went online, the friend said, and I was asking Google how to kill myself. And I landed on that website. I'm seven years later, and I'm still getting emotional telling you the story. I go online, and I saw that website, and it saved my life. And God, the next day, gives her a coffee meeting with the creator of the website. And I'm, I'm thinking, like, I hear these stories, and I'm like, oh, like, yes, yes, yes. When we so much of technology, we... We use it in a way that can be destructive and we're building technology in a way that sometimes can be so destructive. And we hear the news stories of how it's, how it's deceiving and how it's hurting us. And that's all something we need to continue talking about, but let's not lose sight of the ways that we can redeem it, the ways that it can be used to do good and help people that are in their darkest places 
And so I just remember that story too, uh, 18, because I was just like, this, like, we need way more of this. We need to flood the technological world with these kinds of websites to combat as well a lot of the negative. So just a game changing story, even in my personal life. Wow. Wow. What an incredible story and testimony mm -hmm. and what a wild coincidence <laughs> that they would be meeting the next day. My goodness. I think the next generation, Gen Z, the one after that are, are very wise and are very aware of what's going on. I think you're going to see a greater uh, value put on in person experience more than we've ever seen. We love Canada and we want to see it strong for generations to come. That's why we do this show. We can't do it alone. We need your help. Unlike commercial TV, this program is 100% donor funded. If you'd like to see more episodes produced on important issues for our nation, please consider signing up to be a monthly partner or giving a special gift today. Every gift makes a real difference and all gifts are tax deductible. Together, we can build a better Canada for the future. Visit fayteen.tv or call 1-866-844-0844 to donate today. I've had the skills, but I didn't really have the opportunities to apply them. I'm passionate about doing what I can to make the world a better place. I did not know how to use my skills to achieve something greater than myself. Fatech began because we saw that there were tech people that were highly skilled not using their gifts. We also had all these organizations that were struggling with how do we use technology in our organization. We have these huge problems, but we don't know how to solve them. When I heard about Fatech, I thought I can use the talent to glorify God. So I thought it was fantastic. I'm really glad there was Faith Tech. It really helped connect me with organizations like MAF that's making positive change to the world. MAF is a Christian charity. We want to transform people's lives in developing nations by meeting physical needs. We bring in medicine, we bring in doctors, we bring in food, we medevac people out that are sick to hospitals. Like many organizations, we need to be able to demonstrate impact. Measuring impact is very difficult. Our donors want to know how their funds have been used to be able to provide change. The Faith Tech community loves to solve big problems. The solutions we bring are things that most organizations and charities aren't thinking about. We thought that Faith Tech could help us solve the problem of collecting both quantitative and qualitative data in the field. And so they presented at our hackathon. This hackathon it was pretty cool, it was combining faith and technology to improve a certain sector of one's life. Out of that came the idea of creating an ultra simple to use app that would allow the pilots to gather some impact numbers that we could then translate into demonstrating the impact that we're having. We came up with just a mock user interface, it turned out pretty well. We actually won first place at the hackathon. And that's when Peter came into the picture as a project manager. I thought, wow, oh, this is a project I would love to work on. At the end of the hackathon, I said, Hey, how about we really finish this application off? And that's how we started. This amazing group of volunteers said, we're pretty passionate about what you guys are doing. And they, they've begun to turn this idea into, into reality. We began meeting every single week to discuss our progress, how we can make it better. I knew it was for the great cause, and I want to make sure that uh, we deliver what we set out to do. I've continued to work on this project because I feel like I'm contributing to something that's bigger than just the app. I'm adding to something that's going to be there forever. I've been impressed with their continued dedication. There'd be lots of moments where it would have been easy to fade and they didn't. And here we are today and we're looking at beta testing the app. Here at MAF we're all about community, we're all about fellowship, it's in our name. So now to see a group of volunteers work on an app to help us do our job better is exactly what we love. We can capture a lot more stories. We can capture how many communities have been reached by the evangelist, how many people did the doctor see, how many people received vaccines. That's the really the reason we are here. Together with that, we record our flight data, the hours we've flown, the landings we've done, the places we've visited will help us to focus on what we do so that more people will be impacted by the work of MEF. 
it's very exciting to take part in su such a big project. We all come from really different backgrounds, but we had a common goal in mind that just bonded us all together. The very fact that a handful of volunteers got together, committed to building this out, is remarkable. And this would have costed tens of thousands of dollars. I feel proud about the work we have done. And so you guys are determined to use technology for good, for the advancement mm. uh, and from, a, from your faith perspective as well. And in your videos, I've noticed that you talk a little bit about making sure that you're mastering tech, that tech isn't mastering mm. you, speaking about the individual. So here we have the developers that have an awesome responsibility and opportunity to advance goodness, but also the responsibility of the individual. Uh, give yeah. us some reflections on that. You're dad, you got two little ones, this world yeah. is wired. How do we navigate in a way that's healthy? Yeah, so I mean, speaking to those two again, so on, on one, uh, one side of it, you've got essentially big tech, and, and this incredible industry that is uh, extraordinarily influential, extraordinarily powerful, uh, is influencing us and society in, in ways I don't think we've ever seen in an industry like it's truly it's remarkable how powerful a few people can be in the world. And um, this is where I think, how do you see transformation in that space? So I think you can approach this from a legal perspective with regulation. I think to me, the bottom up approach is you bring you get people that want to reimagine and redefine and view how we create technology in a totally different way. So that's what we're really passionate about is kind of that ground up uh, transformation of the industry of big tech. So we can't lose sight of that. But I still think that for us as individuals, if we are so focused on complaining, consuming, critiquing those that are creating the technology and other users of it, we're spending so much energy doing that when we've got to get our own home in order. And so um, one of the things I'm concerned about is the uh, continued um, disregard, in a sense, of the influence that technology is having on us individually. And so for my family, I've got an eight-year-old, a five-year-old. Um, we have some very strict boundaries in our house around technology. Um, we follow a very strict uh, Sabbath call it a digital Sabbath. Um, this is something actually we encourage a lot of people to do is take one day a week off from technology. So you can still use, I'm talking about digital technology. So if you have a fridge or a stove, that's okay. But don't use your phone. Don't use a TV screen. Take a day off a week from that. Other practices are like, put your phone to bed. And what I mean by that is don't have your phone in your bedroom. Now, this is like a radical statement for uh, some people because it's like, well, my phone's my alarm, my phone's this, my phone's that. Like you, we have a serious problem right now where the majority of adults, and now this is getting younger and younger, the very first thing we do when we wake up in the morning is check our phone. So that means like statistically, I'm going to wake up and check what notifications, what emails, what text messages I got before I kiss my wife good morning, before I say hi to my kids. And that is absolutely the wrong way around. Like absolutely. The first thing we need to do is be settled. We need to, to the best of our ability, say welcome to the day to those that we love and have space. So even another practice, a spiritual practice that I think should be a practice we all adopt is a solitude. Dallas Willard is famously famous for saying the greatest uh, spiritual discipline that is the hardest to do in, in modern society is the spiritual practice of solitude, quietness, and stillness. But because of all the influences of technology, we do have to work harder to put those practices in place in order to protect our family, in order to protect our own uh, sanity and our own uh, spiritual well-being. Um, taking care of ourselves. And I, I don't want to disregard what's happening in big tech and a lot of other tech companies. And, and I think there's some wonderful people that are, are trying to influence that space. But I'd love to see a movement 
of people that spend more time talking about how we get our home in order rather than talking about what, what's happening out there. Yeah, and of course, we are now more than a decade into the social media revolution or the social media mm. era. And all the studies yeah. now are showing that there is a link, especially in the younger generation, between mental health, suicidal tendencies, and yeah. social media use. So even for us as moms and dads, we need to realize this isn't just about learning to relate in healthy ways with one another within our home, but that there are some mm. real mental health dangers and vulnerabilities involved when people are addicted yeah. to technology. So those boundaries are so important. Mm. So thank you for mm -hmm. dialoguing with me on that. So James, uh, you guys are motoring forward though here. You're, you're in 37 cities, 14 nations. What's on the horizon for some of the problems that you guys are planning to solve in the days ahead? Yeah, well, you've probably uh, been hearing, hearing about artificial intelligence a lot or some other frontier technologies like VR, blockchain, all of these kinds of, of things. Um, so we're obviously spending a ton of our time trying to figure out um, how do we uh, view these technologies uh, for us, like very much from a biblical lens. Um, and how do we then create technology in these spaces that can, like you're saying, advance good, uh, advance redemptive purposes rather than harmful. Um, so in, in the frontier technology space, there's there's a lot of concern, you know, and you're, you're hearing a lot about the concern uh, online around uh, things like artificial intelligence. And so we are concerned about that as well. Um, you're going to hear more and more about that. An example would be I just shared with some uh, people in our fake tech network um, there's this thing called liar's dividend, liar's dividend. And just to help people understand uh, the, the world of artificial intelligence is think of a image that a computer creates that's not real. And that gets posted online. And then someone sees that and it could be you know, related to an election, which is going to be the topic of the year because you have the most major elections, I think, ever in history in one year. Like this is the year of elections for sure uh, globally. And so you see an image and you think that's real and you post it and you talk about it and then you come to find out that was created by a, a piece of technology. And that would be a, a, a artificial intelligence coming in and someone leveraging that to create a, an image as an example. That'd be a very negative use of it. What I'm concerned about is what's called liar's dividend, which is this idea that now it's more common that a real thing, like you and I talking right now, Fatine, you and I talking, that what is real gets questioned and then gets claimed as fake. And that's the growing trend right now, which is the things that are real, now that everyone's awareness of AI is increasing, now truth becomes questioned more than things becoming fake that are assumed as real. And the, the reason that's a bigger concern for me is it undermines truth at like the most deep level. And so I think one of the big trends we're actually going to see this coming year is I think the next generation, Gen Z, the one after that, are, are very wise and are very aware of what's going on. And I think you're actually going to get a, and my, my optimism kicks in here, and I really believe and hope that you're going to see a natural trend of the next generation starting to realize this. And I think you're going to see a greater uh, value put on in-person experience more than we've ever seen. I think people are just going to be so hungry. I just had lunch with a guy I met for the first time in our uh, co-working space. He got a new job and he says, I had to just come in and meet people even though it's not expected to me because I need to gain trust with people. And he associated, non-believing guy, he associated trust with in-person experience. And so to me, the trend of technology being undermining truth more and more um, is you're hopefully going to see a greater trend towards like, I need to meet a hug. I need to see somebody. And I think we're going to really be longing for that even out of this last three years coming out of the pandemic. I think that's actually going to ramp up more than ever. And technology is playing, I think, a big role in what's going to lead. So that's, that's, that's just maybe one, 
one trend. A long way of answering your question, Baitine, but uh, hopefully what sits underneath one of those technology trends is what I see as something beautiful that could emerge. Well, that's such a fascinating observation. And I hope you're right, because I think the downside of yeah. the social media, media culture is that we've lost connection at the community level yeah. with one another. Sure, we can keep in touch with our aunt on the other side of the world, but what about our right. neighbor? Do we even know our neighbor's name? And so uh, that's a really fascinating observation. I hope you're right about it. Um, so as yeah. we begin to land this, um, how do people get connected with you, James? Let's say we've got somebody that's watching here and they're in the tech industry. Yeah. Industry, or maybe one of their their children or grandchildren are in the tech industry. How do they connect yeah. with you? Definitely go to faithtech.com and you'll see kind of stories of what we're all about, what we're doing. Uh, we have educational tools on here as well. So if anyone, any pastor or church leader is listening, we have some resources to help churches think more deeply about technology. And then we've done events on like digital addiction and if that's something anyone listening is struggling with, digital addiction, um, which is a very um, under-discussed, significantly present uh, problem right now, please reach out to us. We may not be the expert on digital addiction, but we have many friends in our network that can help with this. Um, and we need to take that seriously. We take, I think we take a lot of drug addiction very seriously. We take um, drinking addiction very seriously. And, and yet there's this digital realm and, and it's emerged so quickly. And we just assume, well, I stay up till 2, 3 a.m. every night just watching Netflix. That's not that big of a problem. That's a problem. And we need to um, get help with that. And hopefully we can point you in the right direction uh, to some people that can help think a lot of this through with you and just give you an education on faith and technology. Well, thank you for those tremendous resources. And thank you for your time mm -hmm. today, James. I'm so inspired that there are people like you in Canada that are taking their natural gifts and abilities and skills and determining to use them for good. Not just you personally, but the whole network that you've been building. Yes. So uh, thanks so much. We'll be watching your good work in the days ahead. Thanks. Well, thank you for joining me once again this week for another important conversation. And thank you to our regular supporters who keep us at it. Please take a moment to check out Faith Tech and their great resources at Faith tech.com. If you want to watch this interview again and share it with your friends or loved ones, you can find it anytime at fateen.tv along with other previous programs that we have produced. If you're ever having a hard time finding a show, just email our team and we are happy to serve you. If you would like to give a special gift or maybe even sign up to become one of our amazing monthly partners so that we can continue to produce shows and air all across Canada, we would be so incredibly grateful. Just call Call us at 1-866-844-0844 to give securely over the phone. Or if you want to give online, go to fateen.tv. On our website, you can also sign up for our email list so that you never miss a show. Lastly, if you have a question about faith or you have a personal prayer request, just give us a call and our team would be honored to chat with you and pray with you. You can also submit a personal prayer request through our website anonymously if you prefer. We are here for you. Thanks again for joining me today. Hope to see you next week.